Hi, my name is Paul Massimiano, and I'm a cardiovascular surgeon. I've been performing heart operations for more than 20 years, and during this time, there have been incredible advances in how we care for patients with heart disease. One of my particular areas of interest, and the one about which I'd like to share some thoughts with you today, is surgery for mitral valve disease. The mitral valve is located between the left atrium and the left ventricle. Normally, the valve resembles a parachute. The chute is made up of leaflets that open and close. When open, blood passes from the atrium into the ventricle. When the leaflets close, they prevent blood from returning to the atrium. Essentially, it's a one-way valve, and when it works properly, blood goes in one direction, from the atrium to the ventricle, and then from the ventricle out to the rest of the body. Diseases of the mitral valve may result in either regurgitation or stenosis. In mitral regurgitation, the mitral valve does not fully seal when it closes, causing the valve to leak. In mitral stenosis, the valve does not fully open. Both of these conditions need to be treated. Both can be treated medically for a period of time, but as the disease progresses, both situations may need surgical intervention. The goal of mitral valve surgery is to accurately identify the nature of the problem and repair it. If it's a leak, the leak needs to be stopped. If it's a problem with a valve opening, the valve has to be made to open properly. It's usually preferable to repair the valve rather than replace it. However, sometimes repair is not possible and an artificial valve needs to be inserted. Most of the time, the diagnosis and management of valvular heart disease begins with family practice physicians and internists and is followed up by a cardiologist. The goal of the cardiologist is to make the diagnosis and to perform appropriate tests to determine the extent of the problem with the valve. The cardiologist will treat the valve medically or refer the patient for surgery if appropriate. Many patients have symptoms from their valvular heart disease and it's clear to them and to their physicians that surgery is the best option. However, there's also a group of patients, particularly with mitral disease, who may have significant problems with a valve and yet experience no real symptoms. It's hard for these patients to grasp the fact that while they feel well, they need open heart surgery. The reality, however, is that if the patient is operated on early, before symptoms develop, the probability of a successful outcome is improved and the risk of the surgery is actually lower.